Well, the uh, ongoing problem is now the Alta loans, uh, which are around 650 FOIC loans. Uh, that's the credit rating level. The average credit rating is around 700. And uh, so these were poorer loans. Uh, they, they're still playing out to the end of the year. And then we've got um, option arm loans, which will go into 2011 to 2012. And then we have uh, prime loans. So many people with real good jobs have lost their jobs, and they're losing their homes as well. And their homes generally are more expensive. Uh, the homes that stretch anywhere from, uh, say, 600000 just to 5 or $10 million. And so we're not going to see a bottom in housing until 2011 or 2012. And so it's just going to deteriorate. Schilling, Schilling, uh, Gary Schilling came out today and said he expects another 35% drop. Uh, I'm not as negative as he is. Uh, 35% on 35% is 70%. I do not see, you know, homes even in some of the former hot areas going down that much. Uh, I think uh, former hot area homes could get down 50. Homes over a million dollars that went up substantially. Uh, could get down 60, maybe 65 to 70 percent, uh, depending upon how much they went up. Uh, it's not good, uh, but it's not, I don't think, as bleak as what uh, Gary Schilling had to say. And he's been very good, but we've been ahead of him. And uh, our estimates were uh, better than his on the way down, so to speak, in, in, in the drop in prices. And um, so anyway... Uh, this is what we're facing, and it's not going to go away. I don't care what they do. And we're still looking at commercial real estate dropping another 60 to 70 percent, and all those loans are going to go back to the banks, and they're going to be on the bad side of the balance sheet. I mean, there's no end to this thing. And, you know, by shoving $14.8 trillion uh, into the banks and, and others, uh, such as Chrysler and and uh, General Motors and AIG, and, and now we're giving money to six other insurance companies. And I think insurance companies are a sleeper in here. Very careful. If you get cash values, you get annuities, you could be in serious trouble because they could drop 50 or 60 or 70 percent of their value. And some of them are down uh, 35 to 50 percent already, just like the market is, because that's what they in part invest in, is in the market although some of them have only bonds, and you have to find out what the value is and what they're invested in. But anyway, it's a sleeper. People should be walking, watching. Uh, we also have a possibility only of the government rolling uh, retirement plans into Social Security to, to make it solvent. And, of course, revenues are dropping, and Social Security payments uh uh, into the fund are a tax, just like the other taxes, and there's no guarantee that they have to pay Social Security out at all. So uh, that possibility exists that they will roll them in, and subscribers will know what I think when the time comes. If that bill ever comes out of committee, I will recommend everybody get out of every retirement plan, even if it includes leaving your job and you're 63 years old, because you'll lose it all. And some of the retirement plans I've seen stretch anywhere from 200000 to $5 million. And uh, you don't want to see that money get down a chute. And a chute would be into the lap of the Treasury uh, to be spent on three or four more wars to send your children out to get killed in. Well, you know, we are really having problems. I think it was very interesting, and most people really don't understand that sometime last year, uh, they actually, Medicare, which ordinarily has been a cash cow, uh, uh, they took a lot more money in for Medicare than they put out. <clears throat> but last year, very quietly, 
Medicare started putting out more than it was bringing in because so many people had lost their jobs. And so uh, people weren't paying in to the, the, their employers weren't paying in Medicare and Social Security. And suddenly Medicare is putting out more than it's taking in. Now, where does the deficit come from? Well, we have these, these bonds, you know, we have these government bonds there. And so they cash in the bonds. And who pays the bonds when they're cashed in? The government. Because there is no Social Security fund. It's IOUs from the government that doesn't have any money. That's one reason we're going to have such a massive deficit this year is because, uh, and one reason they have to get their, their socialized medicine system through and begin rationing access to health care in the name, of course, of bringing down the price and giving universal access to health care. Basically, they're going to deprive people of health care and, of course, really destroy a, a wonderful health care delivery system because right now, Medicare is putting out more than it's bringing in, but we can't let the American people know that. Well, you're absolutely right. I wrote a piece today for Wednesday, short piece on the on the uh, universal uh, health uh, situation. You know, most of the money that's been allocated under the stimulus package to go into uh, medical, we'll just put it at that, is for the uh, electronic updating of records. And the reason for that is, well, if you get hurt uh, and they have, uh, say, your Social Security number um, and you're in New York and, and uh, they can access your records if they're in uh, Phoenix uh, within seconds. And that's not a bad thing. The problem is, what else are they going to do with that information? And I think, you know, uh, the the cost of medical care for each individual, 70% of it is spent during a lifetime. In this case, from 65, we'll say, to 81. And in 82 years old, which is the actuarial time to die, um, 30% of the cost of taking care of the health of a person occurs. The government wants to avoid that. They want, don't want to pay the Social Security, and they really don't want them hanging around for a year and running up that 30% on the taxpayer, so to speak, or their structure. And I think they're going to use those records for euthanasia. And uh, I think they're going to, you know, people say 82 and they come down with a serious disease that will terminate within a year. Uh, they'll just uh, give them something and, and, and allow them to pass away. And that will save the government the Social Security uh, as well as the 30% that they'd be spending on them to keep them alive. I mean, that's my take on it. That's where I... I think they're headed with this. I thing. think you're absolutely right. What they want to do is kill off the elderly, the useless eaters, and they're going to say, well, we'll have a committee. They'll determine what is appropriate for your age and for your usefulness and for, I mean, when you get to a certain point, you're going to die anyway. Why should we spend, you know, $100,000, you know, for a hospitalization? Of course, the reason it costs $100 is because they've done everything they could to run up the prices. And, of course, with their cost shifting, well, they created an impossible situation because the government doesn't pay the full cost of hospitalization and then they shift it to others. But they've devised a system right now where they're going to begin to ration access to health care. And you're going to have the committee determining what treatment is appropriate for someone in their 60s and what is appropriate for someone in their 70s. And do you really want to, the people uh, who manage Katrina uh, to be managing your health care? But that's exactly what's going to happen if the American people don't speak up. We're moving towards a fascist system where we will have euthanasia and the destruction of the elderly. And, of course, what can you say? There's no money. Well, what are we going to do? We've got to provide health care for everybody, don't we? That's why we've got to begin to limit access to health care. We want to protect your privacy. That's why we're going to put your, your medical records on the Internet so everybody can see them. Ladies and gentlemen, they say one thing, they talk in glowing terms, but they have a different agenda. Because, of course, I believe many of them worship a different God. We'll be back here in just a moment. 
uh, with Bob Chapman from the International Forecaster. If you have any questions, we'd love to hear from you. Our telephone number is one triple eight two four Liberty, one triple eight two four Liberty, or here in the Central Coast of California, four six four eight two nine five.